So it's now been just over a month that I've been using this little hockey puck in my shack on a daily basis. This thing has been up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's time to review it, this time on K6 UDA Radio. Guys, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button to my channel, please hit the subscribe button now. Um, I'm doing all kinds of stuff. You know, I'm going through a bunch of stuff. I've got more gear here than I could possibly use, and I'm going to start passing some of this stuff off onto you guys. Uh, so hit that subscribe button. Let's make the channel big. And if this video is helpful to you, if you like it, please, uh, you know what? The thumbs up. My, my, how things have changed in the world of digital radio over the years. Now, you guys may or may not know that I was pretty much an early adopter of D-Star. And back in the day, uh, several years ago, I got an original Pi and a uh, DV Mega here, and I got this very cool case, which looks like a huge brick by today's standards. Now, two years ago, I uh, was a very early adopter of this Shark RF open spot, and this absolutely changed the way that I used a hotspot it was very easy to set up. It had a few growing pains uh, early on, but this has been a fantastic uh, hotspot for me. And as you will see by the little DMR sign on this one, uh, over the course of the last few months, I have had a lot of you DMR fans uh, tell me, oh, I am biased against DMR. And for that, I am going to call the bullshit flag 10 yards because that ain't so. I happen to love the DMR world, the, the setup. What I'm not wild about are the current crop of radios. Now, I haven't played with the Anytone 868 or the 878. And if uh, Bridgecom or... TYT or any tone wants to send me one of those to review, uh, I would be happy to give that a very fair shot. But we're not here to talk about, uh, we're not here to talk about the bullshit flag today. Today, we are talking about the open spot two. Uh, this is the new iteration of the open spot See, this, the big drawback to this one was it had to be plugged into an Ethernet cable. Always had to be plugged into something, whether it was like a little wireless box to take it with you, plus power, or, uh, or just leaving it plugged in. Now, here in the shack, that wasn't so much of a problem, uh, and the thing just worked all the time for me. It was very, very, it's been very, very nice. Uh, very easy to change these things from mode to mode. You could go from uh, uh, D-Star to DMR to C4FM with a few clicks of the mouse. This one has really upped the game. The Shark RF people uh, have upped the game immensely with this uh, with this iteration. This thing is literally tiny. It is just unbelievably tiny. It is very simple. It is Wi-Fi only. You can't plug this in. Uh, uses a USB 3 cable to plug in. So the, the little mini USBs aren't going to work. Uh, it comes with a USB 3.0 cable, which is nice. It has one little tiny button on it, which is used to reset it and put it in its AP mode, 
which is an access point mode, and that's where you begin with this. In and of itself, this thing is very, very simple. It has a multicolored LED light inside that lets you know visually kind of where it's at. I'm gonna break out this. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I got another review coming on the FT2, but we'll put that down here for the moment. I'm gonna hold this up. This is how fast the Open Spot 2 Hold. fires up. One, ready. Just as soon as I plug that in. I'm telling you, my friends, how that is about as fast as I've ever seen a hotspot fire up. There is almost no time at all that this thing needs to hook up. And uh, again, for all my uh, DMR haters out there, or my DMR lovers that say I'm a hater, if you'll notice, I'm using my uh, Yesu radio here on uh, on DMR. It's on TAC 310. So the things that I absolutely adore about this little hotspot is the fact that it boots up almost instantaneously. I mean, you don't have to wait a minute, two minutes, or three minutes for it to go through a boot cycle because it's a complete computer. I don't know how they did it, but it's magic and it is damn near instantaneous how this thing boots up and connects to whatever you've got it programmed into. I also love the fact that the Open Spot 2 is able to connect to uh, D-Star, DMR, C4FM, P25, NXDN, and I don't even know what NXDN is. <laughs> but it'll do it. It makes it absolutely uh, quick and easy to take that C4 FM radio and turn it into a DMR radio. Well, it doesn't actually turn it into a DMR radio, but it allows you to use the DMR network. And that's what I love about DMR. It's not so much the hardware, it's the software. Now, there are a few functions that uh, something like one of these Pi Stars will do that the, uh, that the open spot isn't doing right now, uh, especially on the C4FM side that I've seen. That is being able to use the wires X button on say your FTM 400 or in this case, the, FT, uh, the FT2DR. I've been in contact with the uh, Shark RF people and that functionality, that wires X button functionality under uh, C4FM is coming in January. So, uh, so for the guys that love the Pi Star on their C4FM radios uh, and being able to use wires X on there, use the, the wires X button and be able to list out whatever's on the YSF network or whatever, however they're doing it, uh, that functionality is coming to the open spot too next month. That's what I love about Shark RF is these guys are, they're constantly innovating this thing. They're constantly adding things, making it better, fixing things that people see and it is lightning, lightning fast. Uh, they are in touch with you like within hours all the time. This is consistent since the, uh, since the days of the big blue box. Now, obviously the heart of the open spot isn't in the, uh, isn't in the hardware at all. It's in the software, so let's go take a quick look at the software and I'll tell you what I love about this. Uh, especially compared to some of the other stuff that I've seen. Okay, I'm not going to go through the entire how to hook this thing up. I did that in my uh, OpenSpot 2 introductory video, 
but here I am, I'm booting it up, and this is how fast it boots up into uh, C4FM to um, DMR mode. One of the features that I really like about the new uh, software is this quick setup. It'll take you uh, just <laughs> seconds, really, to set up any one of these modes that you want. And there is a whole lot going on inside each one of the modes. Different parameters are uh, quickly set up in any one of these modes and you're on the air in no time. Switching between modes, say from D star or DMR to D star is just that easy. You pick out uh, what kind of reflectors you want. If you want to go to a gateway, if you want to go to C4 FM settings, these are the settings you go to do that. The main status page kind of gives you a, uh, a dashboard feel. It brings up all of the call signs and names of people that are calling on the uh, reflector room or whatever that you're on. On the connector page, you can manually uh, put in all of the same things you could do in the quick menu. The modem page is uh, almost redundant now. Uh, you could pick the modem settings that you want, the frequency, and uh, CWID if you're running it as a repeater. On the settings page, uh, there's all kinds of configuration profiles that you could set up. You could set up up to, I think, five of them. Uh, you could add in your location settings. Uh, there's just a ton of, of stuff that you could do with the OpenSpot 2 here. And it's very easy. It's all done in a web portal. The network page is kind of where all the uh, wireless magic happens. If you've enabled the advanced mode, which is down on the bottom right, that brings up an entirely uh, new set of parameters that you can uh, screw around with. And as you can see now, uh, you could see my wireless settings for my home. It goes to my home network and then my iPhone if the home network is not available. Moving to the right side of the page, these are kind of dependent upon which mode you're in. I happen to be in DMR mode right now. So I get a lot of functionality that I can use within DMR. And it just keeps going on. There's the Brandmeister Manager. And I'm not even going to go into all of this stuff because it'll just take a ton of time and I don't want to bore you with it. If you want to know more, I'll do more videos about different sections. So here is where the Open Spot 2 really shines. So I bring a little portable battery with me. I bring my Open Spot 2 and I plug it in here. Open Spot Profile 1 ready. So the open spot comes up and I've got my iPhone hooked up here and it is looking. Open spot connected to Brandmeister 3101 linked static talk group oh. 31328 and 31773 channel you're using. Oh, look at that. On a little eight inch antenna on a hand my, uh, a little two and a half inch stubby. My Yaesu FTM 400 Fusion Radio is now a mobile DMR radio on Brandmeister TAC 310. So now I have full control here of the Open Spot 2 right here from my iPhone. Now, isn't that cool? I've got my dashboard right here, got everything I need, all in the Jeep. It seamlessly uh, found my iPhone. I don't know, it doesn't get much more simple than that. Guys, if you like the video, please give it the thumbs up. 
you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please hit that subscribe button right now. I don't, I don't hate DMR. I love DMR. <laughs> I'm on DMR right now. Uh, guys, remember, I am still giving away that Yesu FT70 and my Retivas RT95. Go see uh, the FT70 review video for details or go to the K6UDA Facebook page and uh, get filled in over there about how to do that. I don't know. That's all I got this time. I'll see you next year. Happy New Year. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.